Hello, my name is Barbara Yard and today I'm going to show you how to make a silver cutout necklace. This is a sample of the kind of thing that we will be making. You'll be texturing, drilling and using your saw frame. It works really well with mixed metals. This is a lovely pendant and you can also make it into earrings or a bracelet. Let's get started. So the metal I'm using, I'm using 0.8 millimeter copper sheet, and I'm also using 0.8 millimeter sterling silver sheet. The sterling silver sheet is going to be for the solid shape, and the copper is going to be used for my cutout shape. I'm now going to pick a template. I've got this first one here. I'm not using the center of my metal. I'm going to use as little as I can. So I'm moving it into the corner here. So that's a good space. So I've got my outer shape. Now I'm going to add my inner shape and I'm going to go for, this is going to be my inner shape here. So I've got an outer and an inner shape. The first section I'm going to cut out is my inner shape. I'm now going to just do a center punch and that's where I'll drill my hole to cut out. If you don't have an electric pendant motor, you can drill by hand, but it just will take a little bit longer. I've got my drill bit, and this is approximately a one millimeter drill bit. Just going to now lubricate my drill bit with some wax. And drill my hole. I'm now going to get my saw blade, pop it through the hole and cut that inner circle out. I now have my saw blade through my hole and I'm just going to cut my inner circle out. Again, I'm going to lubricate my saw blade gently. I'm now going to cut my outer section and then file it all nice and neatly. Oops, just broken my saw blade. I 
I've now cut my shape out and I'm going to get a half round file and just file it neatly. And then I will just take an emery stick round the edge and the inside to make sure it's all nice and smooth. I've nearly finished cleaning my piece up. I'm going to do a bit more filing to it and then clean up the last parts with my emery stick. So I just need to file a little tiny bit more just to make sure my curves are nice and curved. And I'm going to finish now with my emery stick. This is a coarse emery stick and I'd say it's about maybe uh, 800 emery stick, quite coarse. Trying to make sure I keep my shape. As neat as possible. Going to buff the inside as well. And before I move on, if I think my outside needs a buff, I'm going to also do that. When I'm buffing with my emery stick, I'm keeping it all in one direction. I'm not crisscrossing about. So it's all in a backwards, forwards motion. So that's my outer ring finished. I'm gonna put that aside and do now my solid ring. 
And for that, I'm using 0.8 millimeter sterling silver. And again, you can use any colored metal that you like. I'm picking a contrasting pattern. So I'm going to go for a pear shaped. And again, I'm bringing this right to the end. I'm gonna use as little metal as I possibly can. Just gonna get my scribe. And mark that out. Oh, before I forget, actually before I mark it out, I'm going to put a bit of texture on my solid shape. And it's best to put your texture on before you actually cut your shape out, just because when you texture a piece of metal, it's going to make it slightly thinner, slightly longer, slightly wider. I'm going to use a hammer technique. I'm using a hammer with a flat edge to it. I put this on a steel block. Just hammer along the whole thing. This is just a random pattern. So now I've got my texture there. I'm just going to go around my mark that I made before so that I can cut it out because I just need a nice clear view of it. I'm now going to cut this shape out. I've now cut my pear shape out. I'm going to again file that with my half round file or if you've got a flat file you can use that as well but use your half round just to get in the little grooves there. Then I'm going to use my emery stick and clean up the edges. got a little point on my edge there. I don't want it so sharp so I'm just going to use my emery stick just to give it a little slight curve to take off the sharpness. And I think I'll do that on my copper one as well. Just take the emery stick and give it a light curve there. I now have my inner and my outer shape. I'm now going to be soldering my two pieces, my inner shape to my outer shape. And to do this, I'll be sweat soldering. I'm now going to sweat solder 
my outer piece to my inner piece. I've just laid it out here to see what it's going to look like. So I'm going to actually do my sweat soldering on my sterling silver piece. And to sweat solder, just put in a bit of solder flux where I need my solder to go. I'm not covering my whole piece, just the area I need. I'm going to lay small pillions of sterling silver solder along. And I'm going to melt these down. There we go, so now I'm going to start sweat soldering. Don't want my pieces to jump, so I've got to be careful how I'm heating them all and make sure they stay in the place that I want them to be. Great. Quench that in cold water. I'm going to pickle this and then just file back my solder a tiny little bit. I'm just going to gently file my piece of solder that I've put on here. I just want a nice flat base. I think that should be enough. I'm going to grab my piece that I've sweat soldered, soldered here, and the piece that I'm going to use. I think it was that way, wasn't it? Yeah. And I'm going to now borax, the place I'm going to solder along here and I'm going to borax my piece of solder as well and to lay it on top just position it and get it right about there now I'm going to heat it And you'll know when the piece has successfully sweat soldered because you'll you, you kind of actually see it move. There we go. Perfect. I'm going to now quench that in some water. And again, put that in my pickle. I've now sweat soldered my two pieces together and I'm just going to clean up all my edges, making sure everything's nice and neat. To do that, I am using my emery stick again, just to get into the little grooves here. So it's nice and smooth. And again, just in that little groove there to make it nice and smooth and neat. I'm going to check the back as well. And I've got a little tiny bit of solder I can see there. And I've just got 
a scrap of emery paper that I've torn off. I'm just going to use that to rub along here. The last thing I need to do on my piece is decide where I want to drill my hole for my jump ring. And I think I'm going to drill my hole on the top there. First thing I need to do is get my center punch and my rawhide hammer. I'm going to decide where I want to put my punch hole and just do a really gentle tap. I just want a tiny little divot. I've got my pendant motor here and this is a one millimeter drill bit inside. If you haven't got a pendant motor, you can use a um, hand drill, but it will just take you a little bit longer. I'm going to lubricate my piece my drill bit, just so it goes in nice and smoothly. So I've got my hole. I want to make sure my hole is nice and clean. So just clean up the front. I'm going to clean up the back of my hull. I've got some sterling silver jump rings here. And a pair of flat nose pliers. I'm going to grab my pliers, just gently open up my jump ring. I'm just going to slot it through my hole. If you find that your hole is a little bit too small, which mine is, you can go in with a, a larger drill bit and that's what I'm going to do now. Just to widen the hole slightly. Yeah, that should be better. I'm going to just get my flat nose pliers and wiggle my jump ring into place. And at this stage, I would decide whether I want to leave it like that or put it in the polishing barrel to give it a high shine. When you're texturing your piece, you can use anything you like for texturing. If you're lucky enough to have a rolling mill, you could texture with your rolling mill. I normally like to use a hammer. This is a lovely project. You can do lots of shapes, different shapes, different sizes, lots of um, shapes and designs to explore. I hope that you enjoyed making this. And when you finish, please share it with us on the Facebook group. And I hope to see you on another video soon.